Hi, Fiona. Welcome today. Hi, Matthew. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much. Uh, today, we're pleased to have Fiona Jordan, a professor of anthropology at the University of Bristol. Uh, Fiona is an evolutionary and linguistic anthropologist with broad interests in explaining cultural diversity. Thanks for being here today. Yeah, thank you, Matthew. I'm, uh, as I say, an evolutionary and linguistic anthropologist, which is really um, a combination of two of the parts of my background in evolutionary biology, linguistics, um, and anthropology brings those together. I've always been a very multidisciplinary um, scholar. Uh, but cross-cultural research and understanding cultural diversity has been at the heart of most of my research projects, which have ranged from kinship terminology to land tenure uh, to uh, counting systems um, across a wide range of uh, different uh, sorts of language families and uh, areas of the world. Can you tell us more about how you've used RAF resources uh, for research? Yeah, I originally I uh, used uh, Haraf in my PhD. So parts of that project were looking at postmarital residence. So where a newlywed couple sets up their household um, across Austronesian speaking societies. And while I had access to some data, I really wanted to flesh that out. And I turned to the uh, rather newly online at that point in time in the early 2000s, um, e Haraf, and was able to um, just make my uh, research projects kind of what would have originally originally been, you know, uh, a huge troll through the ethnographic literature. There are such amazing resources for doing research. And I've used them in a, in a whole range of projects uh, throughout my career, um, either to kind of point my PhD students at kind of getting a flavor of what happens out there or to add to data sets myself. Oh, that's excellent. Can you share with us a presentation that you have prepared for today? Sure. So what I'm going to um, describe for you uh, in just a couple of slides is um, a project that I've been involved in looking at the evolution of uh, quantification. Um, and I've been contributing to an archaeological part of this uh, project, uh, which is called Quanta. So here we're looking at um, ethnographic, linguistic, cognitive, archaeological evidence for how humans evolved our capacity for counting. What you're seeing here is um, some shiny pebbles from archaeological sites across uh, the um, Upper Paleolithic. So we're talking about 30 to 20,000 years ago uh, in France. And archaeologists have excavated these beautiful shiny pebbles and wondered uh, why they might have been used. There's evidence from spatial and surface analyses that they were deliberately collected and shined and used together, but why on earth is that? And that's kind of where I come in as a, uh, a cross-cultural uh, anthropologist. Um, the project itself is very broad. It's got archaeology, it's got linguistics, it's got ethnographic work in it as well. So I read nearly 11,000 paragraphs about uses of pebbles across the ethnographic record. So these are a few examples here of some of the um, societies and the kinds of functions that we find people using shiny rocks, uh, little pebbles, and they range from things like use uh, as weapons being thrown or as tools through to ritual and, and uh, music or uh, counting, which was one of the hypotheses that we had about what these um, little pebbles might have originally been used for. And so by reading uh, these different accounts of human groups and how they were, were using um, small pebbles, we were able to build up a picture of what people 10, 20, 30,000 years ago might also have been uh, doing with these lustrous gravels. And this is the data that we have. Um, so across about half of the standard cross-cultural sample, we see um, these different uses and ritual is by far the most uh, important. We see them used as talismans, charms, and divination, uh, embodiments of ancestors. They're used as game pieces, um, handled frequently here, and children use them, uh, and also used in musical instruments, uh, so drums and rattles, for example. So while there is an evidence for counting, um, definitely as game pieces and often as divination um, uh, objects, we see that they were possibly used in a way that was quantifying or, or enumerating something. And I think it's a really nice example of how even on a descriptive level, uh, HRF can be used to really inform um, what we know about the past uh, through what we know about kind of current day cultural diversity. 
thanks so much for sharing. That's wonderful research, and I love how you're synthesizing it in, in an interdisciplinary way. Thank you for joining us today, Fiona. It's been a pleasure. Um, have a great thank day. Thank you for thank you for having me, and an absolute congratulations to HRF for 75 years. Amazing thank, stuff. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Thank you.